Hello and welcome to Monster Abilities and Pathfinder 2nd Edition Part 1 by How It's Played. Over the course of this new series, we're going to discuss the most common monster actions in the game. We're going to start with grab and related abilities like constrict in this video, and we'll be covering engulf, ferocity, frightful presence, knockdown, push, rend, swallow, hull, and trample in following segments. One of the more controversial editing decisions in Pathfinder 2nd Edition was moving common abilities shared by many monsters to the back of the books. This means that stat blocks sometimes feel incomplete and require you to go hunt for an explanation of what the ability means. This glossary, which is included in both of the bestiaries, provides the general rules for each of the abilities that are shared by several monsters. When reviewing these, keep in mind that what you see in the glossary provides a foundation and each specific monster can modify these rules further. So whenever there is a discrepancy between a monster stat block and the ability as it is shown in the glossary, follow the instructions provided by the monster stat block. This can be a bit of a pain, but if you have access to the internet when gaming, you can go to pf2.easytool.es and search for the monster here. And then if you mouse over the name of these common monster abilities and click, it will expand to provide you the full text explanation of those abilities, which is a very nice feature that saves me from having to flip through the books during a session. The first monster ability I want to cover is Grab. In order to use Grab, the monster must first score a hit with an attack that includes the word Grab in its damage entry. For example, a giant octopus can make a melee arm attack that deals 2d8 plus 9 bludgeoning damage plus Grab. This can be a little misleading because what it sounds like is when the octopus hits, it deals the damage plus automatically grabs the target as well. And that's not exactly right. The term plus grab doesn't mean it automatically grabs, it means it has the option of grabbing, but must spend one more action in order to do so. So two actions total, one to strike and gain the option of spending another action to grab. If they do so, they apply the grabbed condition to the target. One quick note, this pertains to the regular grab ability. If the monster has improved grab, then they automatically grab the target on a successful hit and do not need to spend a second action to do so. The grabbed condition is explained on page 620 of the core rules. A grabbed creature is flat-footed and immobilized. Meaning when you're grabbed, you suffer a negative two circumstance penalty to armor class and cannot take any actions that have the move trait. Furthermore, if you attempt any action that has the manipulate trait while you're grabbed, you must pass a DC5 flat check or the action is lost. This would include actions like casting spells that have anything other than just a verbal component and most other activities that require motion or the use of your hands. If the check fails, then you lose any actions or other resources that were dedicated to the action, such as spell slots. So with grabbed, you cannot move, and taking any other actions are more difficult but not impossible. This should not be confused with restrained, which means you can't even attempt any actions with the attack and manipulate trait unless there are attempts to escape. The grab lasts until the end of the monster's next turn but using the grab action extends the duration of grabbed for all creatures that are grabbed by the monster. One use of the grab action extends the duration of all grabbed creatures, not one action per grabbed creature. So say this octopus already has two people grabbed at the start of its turn, it uses its first action to make a melee arm attack against a third player and hits. It applies its damage, and has the option of spending its second action to grab the player it just hit. The octopus does so, and in doing so, not only grabs the third player, but also extends the duration of the grab condition it already had applied to the other two players that were grabbed at the start of its turn. Note that this duration was extended by the octopus spending its second action to grab the third player. Extending the duration is automatically applied when grabbing the next target. And note that improved grab allows a monster to automatically grab a creature it hits with a melee attack, but this does not also automatically extend the duration of the grabbed condition. The monster would still need to spend another action to do so. Fortunately, there are a few ways to get out of being grabbed. 
The first, as already mentioned, is the duration. The grabbed condition lasts until the end of the grabbing creature's next turn, unless they use the grab action again on that turn and extend the duration. Another way to break free from a grab might be if you're pushed by an external force. The legality of this is a little debatable by Raw, so you might want to consider this a house rule, but under the immobilized condition, which is applied when grabbed, it says, if an external force would move you out of your space, then that force must succeed at a check against the DC of the effect holding you in place or the relevant defense, which is usually 42 DC. How this all plays out is completely up to the GM to interpret and make a ruling on. Let's say you're grabbed and another player throws you a rope and tries to pull you free. The GM could rule that this would call for their athletic skill versus the grabbing creature's athletics DC. But they might instead consider this as an application of the aid activity and just use the rope as justification to grant a circumstance bonus to the grabbed player's next escape check. It's entirely up to the GM to decide how these attempts work, but the rules do suggest the possible option of having an external force free the grabbed character as long as it beats the athletics DC or fortitude DC of the grabbing monster as appropriate. The grabbed condition is also removed if the grabbing creature moves away. And note that by raw, when a large or huge sized monster with reach attacks grabs a character, they do not pull their victim towards them and into an adjacent space. Nor are characters knocked prone when they're released by a large grabbing creature. Again, Raw does not apply hard rules to these situations, but instead leaves it up to each GM to review the situation and determine for themselves if any of these situations are appropriate and how to apply them. And of course, there is one more way to get out of the grab condition, and that is by using the escape action. Attempting to escape costs one action and allows you to roll your choice of either acrobatics, athletics, or an unarmed attack against the DC of the effect that's grabbing you. For monsters, this DC will either be 10 plus their athletic skill modifier or will be a DC spelled out in their stat block. This giant octopus has an athletics modifier of plus 20, making their athletics DC 30. Therefore, it would take a DC 30 acrobatics, athletics, or unarmed attack check in order to escape. On a success, the grabbed effect immediately ends. With a critical success, you break free and also get to stride 5 feet. On a failure, nothing happens, and on a critical failure, nothing happens and you cannot try to escape again until your next turn. And two more things to note about escape actions. Escape has the attack trait, so each attempt to escape does contribute to the multiple attack penalty for that round even if you choose to use acrobatics or athletics, it still counts as an attack. And also be aware that each escape attempt is versus one specific grab effect. So if you're grabbed by two or more opponents, you will need to make multiple escape checks to fully break free. Under normal circumstances, a monster cannot use a limb to both grab and attack. Once it's grabbing someone, that limb is dedicated to keeping that target held. But some creatures can use constrict to squeeze and damage their grabbed prey. For example, giant scorpions have an entry that says, constrict one action for 1d6 plus 4 bludgeoning DC 20. At first glance, this might appear incomplete, but if we flip to the back of the bestiary, we see the monster ability entry for constrict says, the monster deals the listed amount of damage to any number of creatures grabbed or restrained by it. Each of those creatures can attempt a basic fortitude save with the listed DC. So in the case of the giant scorpion, it would use one action to make a melee attack. That attack has the word grab listed in its damage entry, so if that attack hits, it can use its second action to grab the target of the attack, and now that it is grabbed, it can use its third action to constrict. When doing so, the grabbed creature would roll a basic fortitude save against DC 20 to avoid suffering 1d6 plus 4 bludgeoning damage. On a successful save, the creature would still suffer half damage as usual with basic saving throws. And again, also note that one use of constrict affects 
all grabbed creatures. So if this was a giant squid who had three different creatures all grabbed at the same time, one action to constrict would apply the constrict effect and damage to all of those grabbed creatures, not one action per. Before we close, I'd like to take a moment to thank all of my patrons. These videos would not be possible without their continued generosity and support. Members of the How It's Played Patreon community receive special benefits like exclusive content and getting to vote on the topics I cover. Visit the links shown at the top of the screen and in the description if you'd like to know more. If you would like to support this channel and help it grow, the easiest way to do that is by subscribing and clicking the bell icon so you get notified when new videos release and I can always be reached through Twitter and Facebook too. Thanks for watching, take care, and happy gaming.